Today we're going to be talking about the uh, painting a red kite, which is a falcon, and this is a detailed painting, so we're jumping forward in time. You see the beginning of it here, painting the background at the moment. Uh, if you paint this, any kind of dark background would be fine. Uh, and we're going to, uh, you can see faint traces of uh, masking fluid across the bird. Uh, that's to prevent uh, losing some of the whites as we lay in some of the underlayment colors. And very soon now we're going to jump forward because this is a, um, a detailed painting and would take a long time. We just want to show you the closing final detailing that's done. And so uh, these are the early preparation stages, of course. And uh, very soon we'll get into uh, showing the work of the feathers. The, uh, there's a light a wash placed on the bottom of the bird, uh, a light uh, burnt umber, and slightly a uh, little bit of, of uh, burnt sienna. You can see I'm letting the paper dry at this point around the bird <clears throat> and getting ready to uh, jump forward in time here to show you the uh, more detailed part of the painting. And you can see there's underlayment uh, on the bottom of it that's talking about a slight uh, wash of light blue at the top of the bird and around the eyes. I already put in uh, most of the, the eyes, maybe 80 or 90 percent of it, and the bill. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing now is, is putting in the uh, series of washes, uh, very small washes of, these are again part of the underlayment, uh, underwash. They are uh, light value. We will gradually work toward the darker values. And in watercolors, of course, you start from light and work to the dark. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. Gradually adding uh, colors. These are like burnt sienna colors coming in at the moment so that uh, you can build up the feather work. Uh, you really can't be in a hurry if you're doing detailed work uh, because uh, it just the feathering just won't look the same. So we're gradually darkening now some of the lower feathers. The strokes are random. They're not any uh, particular type of stroke. Uh, you'll see that uh, it's to make uh, the the randomness the uh, of the stroke is to to make the feathering look more like it's uh, uh, on a natural bird. It wouldn't be the pattern wouldn't be the same over and over, and you have to watch to avoid that. You can see the photograph that I'm painting from uh, in my left hand there. And gradually we're working toward that. Putting in the darker feathers on the top of the back there. <clears throat> we're using probably Payne's Gray and uh, perhaps Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue mixed to make this black uh, pigment. Now we're gradually adding in the the darker feathers at the top of the bird. You see the strokes are sort of put in horizontally but 
uh, it's it's going fast there, but there's a lot of small strokes that are in beside in between these larger strokes, and at this fast speed, you can't quite see the subtlety of some of those smaller strokes. But on that, at the moment, you can see that little jagged edges. Uh, that's to make, of course, to imitate some of the uh, type of feathers that the red kite has in these particular eyes uh, areas of around the eyes and chest. This video really is to give you just some idea of how you would gradually detail uh, feather work on wildlife, in this case um, a falcon. We're probably uh, about 70% done at this point. Uh, much of this is uh, sort of boring to watch because unless you watch it at a high speed because it's just a series of small strokes. And I work around the bird, not finishing one place completely, but as, as I work, I sort of sense where it's needed best. That helps in establish the correct values. When doing a realistic picture, uh, it's uh, important to uh, take your time. It's just a matter of a lot of small steps rather than uh, broad steps. And you build up from the bottom up, from the white image, the drawing upwards, laying in the foundation of, uh, of, of some broad washes and then gradually making it smaller detail until you get to uh, the final stage. Uh, you've seen me put in some uh, shading under the bill and the neck area of the kite and uh, of course all this is just adding to the highlights. And this is basically a wash, a light blue wash that I'm Putting across, uh, need to darken up that area. The light is coming from the right side toward the head of the kite, and so there's a slight shadow. Uh, not that the bird necessarily has uh, that color on it, but that's to to give you some depth. The shading in the the back side. It's not completely white, of course, so there are some uh, shaded areas, light blue areas. But this is also to, to give some dimension to, some roundness and dimension to uh, the kite. And this is a little faster time. And the steps that I'll be using now will be to gradually uh, lower the, uh, to add to the strokes. Uh, I've sped the tape up some because it's just a repetition of small strokes. I'm adding white to the picture at this point, uh, white gouache. Uh, usually you, I don't use white gouache, but in this case, it's very difficult to leave those areas white. We started off the picture with areas of white that was covered by masking, but that was removed, didn't show it on the tape, but that was removed. But even then, there are these fine areas where you needed to put in some very fine uh, hair-like uh, lines to cover up over the dark to create that uh, illusion of, of fine uh, feathers. 
So that's what we're doing. We're adding some white at this point. Uh, we're coming close to the end of the video and uh, this is just a matter of some final touches. So this is the final picture. Uh, red kite, while it looks complicated, it's just a matter of, of working from uh, small areas, uh, putting underwashes, small areas at a time, being uh, take your time and just build one layer upon another. If you like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ray Edmonds, for more videos. Thank you for joining me.